Welcome back to my channel, everyone. Today, let's do chapter two for White Silk Lover. Tuesday, March 30th, 11.30 p.m. Kobe. Before I knew it, Kelly and I were back inside the arena with a good-looking guy holding his shirt over my nose, and it smelled good. He was shirtless and nicely built. I kept my head low as much to keep my nose covered as to hide my wicked little stare at his abs. Close-up view. They moved in symmetry. He had a well-maintained body that excited me. Some blood got on him. Sorry. But this was a nice birthday surprise. However, I don't think I'm going to make a very good impression, seeing as how I'm covered in blood. Tomas? has a little of that sterling vibe. Narrow face, abs you could run your finger along, but no pierced nipples and no tattoos. His skin is as smooth as a piece of paper, but when I bumped into him as we walked, he's solid. Besides being a singer, he must help Holly Quitman. Leading to a, me to a bench just inside the door, Tomas and Kelly stepped away to let an EMT look at my nose. He put on a pair of rubber gloves, then felt around my nose. It's not broken, but very bruised. He leaned my head back, pinched my nose, and within a short time, the bleeding had slowed. Somebody wadded up tissues, and the EMT packed my nose with them, both sides. I bet I look like I have a grapefruit on the front of my head. Kelly said, it's your birthday. Somebody handed Tomas another crew shirt, and as he put it on, his skin stretched out on his abs, and a small appendix scar momentarily stood out, then vanished as he pulled the shirt down. Kobe's got to be Sterling's biggest fan, Kelly said. You wouldn't believe what Kobe's done. Oh? Tomas said. Kelly, I'm sure he doesn't want to hear about it, I said, trying to wipe the blood off my face with either Tomas's old shirt or some part of mine. It didn't work. Sure I would. Tomas let a hint of a smile escape. Kelly shook her head. I'm Kelly Bradford. He's Kobe Wood, and he's too modest. He's lost 120 pounds dancing to every one of Sterling's songs. Tomas actually smiled. That is impressive. How long did it take you? Two years, and check out his arm. How many other fans have a tattoo like Sterling Locks? I gave in. There was no use arguing with Kelly sometimes. I pulled my sleeve up and turned my arm to show off the two, three, four. What can I say? My voice sounded like a gay foghorn. A couple of years ago, Sterling's music changed my life. There was this one song he sang in particular, Whisper, that I swear he wrote just for me. I wiped my face, smearing more blood everywhere. Making bad impressions are easier than good ones. The first time I heard it, there was this one part in the song, Angels whisper to your soul, everything will be all right, that made me think that even a really fat gay person is worth something. Tuesday, March 30th, midnight. Tomas. What? He's gay? The song he mentioned was from my second album. It was just a filler song, one that I wrote, and they actually let me record it. It was seldom sung in any concert, seldom requested. It didn't have a dance beat, unless you slow danced. There was never a music video made, never any buzz about it. I looked at my agent. He shrugged. I said, Today's your birthday. How old are you? Twenty-one. Folding my arms, I gave Joey a sarcastic half-smile. Joey, let's give Kobe a treat. Call on up to Sterling's dressing room. Make sure it's clear. And let's have Kobe clean up in it. After all, we all saw Sterling leave. He won't be back till tomorrow. Joey's brow creased. Just a minute. That's Sterling's private space. It's where he keeps his stuff. I knew what she meant. It was where I am, was turned into Sterling Locke. The wig and the magnetic piercings are on full display. Any old bathroom is fine, Kobe said. The poor guy was a mess. Blood everywhere. He looked like he barely survived some horror movie villain. 
Seldom do they let me push my weight around, but I thought I would this time. Technically, it was Sterling's fault Kobe got trampled. Sterling would say it was okay if Kobe cleaned up in his dressing room. If he knew about it, why not call him? Except, you know how cranky Sterling gets after a concert. The best part was they couldn't argue with me. I don't know, Joey said. Now to get my agent involved. Think of the PR. Sterling Locke lets trampled man use his own dressing room. Tomas does have a point, my agent said. That's a human interest story. The press will love that. And it showed that even Sterling has the occasional moment of niceness. Joey unfolded her arms. Okay, you win. Kobe and Kelly looked at each other as if in shock. I bet the guy never thought this would happen tonight. Stepping close to Joey, I whispered, Send someone to make sure all is in order first. Tuesday, March 30th, midnight. Kobe. Kelly couldn't close her mouth. I couldn't stop jumping. Tomas led us behind the stage to a couple of corridors with security guards lining the way, and we stopped in front of a door with a star on it. Taped to it was a sign that said, S. Lock. I squealed, but it sounded like a pig in heat because of my nose. Tomas opened the door and led the way, followed by Kelly taking my elbow and guiding me inside. The other woman entered behind us, leaning against the open door. It's a simple room, mirrored wall, dressing table with random bits of makeup on it, a twin bed on the side. On a couple of hangers hung the outfit Sterling wore while singing tonight. I paused, stunned, mostly because I looked in the mirror and I saw what a bloody mess I am. The next moment, it hits me. I'm in Sterling Locke's dressing room. Me. Bloody me. Why don't you wash up in here? Tomas pointed to a door leading to a bathroom. It had more mirrors and a shower. Joey, do we have any extra shirts he can have? Feeling like I shouldn't be here, I entered the bathroom and closed the door. This is not happening. I'm hyperventilating. Filling the sink with water, I removed my shirt and placed both shirts in it to soak. Finding soap, I washed my face and noticed something laying on the counter. Right guard? Sterling Locke uses the same deodorant that I use? I squealed, then slapped a hand over my mouth. Sterling Locke and I have so much in common. With a paper towel, I washed the worst of the blood from my face and hands. The packed tissue in my nose has turned red. I looked in the mirror. Sterling doesn't have sagging skin all over his abs. With a pinch, I pulled it away from my right oblique, watching as it tightened the rest of my stomach. Two years of hard work, denying myself everything, and I went from a fat kid who was too scared to take his shirt off to a man who was terrified that everybody would laugh at him if he took his shirt off. My nose? Forget grapefruit. It looked more like a flattened soccer ball. I'm in the one place I never thought I would ever be, meeting a backup singer for the man I worshipped, and my face would scare zombies. Somebody knocked on the door. Coming in, Tomas said. There's no place for me to hide. The shirts are soaking. So I pulled my briefs up as high as they could go, hiding the worst of the skin roll. Holding a crew shirt, Tomas entered and saw me shirtless. It's been months since anyone had seen me like this. The first time was early in high school and everybody laughed at the fat kid. The last time was some stranger at my gym saying, You could use a couple of clothespins. Tomas is going to laugh at the incredible elastic band man I've become. Him with his almost sterling perfect body and his easy smile. He's almost as handsome as sterling. I stare at the way his pecs press out in his shirt or the slight bump of his nipples, or the tautness of his skin on his face and arms. He's not like me. I wait for the laugh, or some rude comment, or some bit of well-meaning sarcasm. It's coming. It always does. Then I paste on a smile and pretend it won't hurt. It's coming. I know it is. Tomas glanced down at my abs. I stopped breathing. Any moment now. I felt the heat in my face, and I pulled my briefs up a little higher. 
but even that won't cover the wrinkles. Please, God, don't let him be too mean. Tomas didn't laugh. Two years of dancing? Sterling should start an aerobic fitness line. His eyes left my messed up abs and lingered on my chest. Tomas didn't make any sarcastic comment either. I let go of my breath, forcing a small exhale as I sighed with relief. You're one of his backup singers? I heard Sterling records all his own tracks, I said. Tomas held out another stage crew shirt. When he's in studio, it's different out on the road. So that's why your voice is kind of like his? I accepted the shirt and put it on. It's easier to harmonize that way. Leading me out of the bathroom, Tomas took me over to the dressing table. Have a seat. Are you sure it's all right? I asked. Tomas didn't laugh or say anything. He didn't make fun of me or taunt me or put me down or anything. As soon as I took a seat in the rotating chair in front of the dressing table, Kelly, Tomas, and Joey sat on the couch. There's now a chair propping the door open. I stared around me. I'm sure I'm drooling all over the shirt. Then I remembered that my nose is packed with tissue, and this whole time I probably have been sounding like an out-of-tune French horn. How long have you been his backup singer? Joy, when did the tour start? September, maybe? Joy removed her hat. Blonde hair was piled high in a bun. No, we started practice in August. August, then. Tomas placed his arms behind everybody as if he owned the couch. Tell you what, it's your birthday. Why don't you ask me any three questions about Sterling? And if I know the answer, I'll tell you. Sterling might not like that, Joey sang. Tomas sang back, then we won't tell him. Kelly, what do I ask? You're asking me? I swiveled on the chair, watching the room rotate in the mirror. Any three questions? Okay, I said. What's his real hair color? Joey laughed. Tomas did as well. I don't know. It's always been white. They touch it up weekly so he shows no roots. I don't think he knows anymore. I've got one, Kelly said. How many girls has he been with at one time? Joey laughed again. On this tour, I've only seen him with two. Tomas gave a wicked little grin, but there are rumors that he had four one night on a previous tour. I knew it, Kelly shrieked. A man like that must have an orgy every night. Tomas leaned forward and stared at me. I don't know how he does it. Parties all night, on tour all day. The man never seems to sleep. Okay, last question. Make it good. I stared at Kelly, but she didn't know what to ask either. Scratching my arm, I caught a glimpse of my tattoo. Maybe it was rude to ask. The answer was probably published somewhere, but I dared the impossible. It was my birthday. Why does he have a tattoo of two, three, four? Tomas pursed his lips. That one's personal. I don't think he's told very many people. That's his mom's favorite psalm and verse. I assume it's his as well. He's not religious. At least he doesn't act like it. But that one is important to him. I'll have to look that one up later, I said. It was a good question after all. Since I didn't know the answer to one of your questions, I'll let you have one more question. If I don't know the answer, your loss. I'll ask, Kelly said. Who's taller, you or Sterling? That's easy. I am, Tomas said, by an inch. Joey chuckled. That's true. I've seen them side by side. Stand up, I said. According to everything I've read, I'm the same height as him. You seemed about my size as well. That means you are about to learn one of his dark secrets, Tomas said. Tomas stood and I walked over to him. See, we're the same height, so how can you be an inch taller than Sterling? He might have exaggerated that point on the press release.